How's it going? David Crandall here with another FL Studio tutorial. Today's video is a request from YouTuber Rome877 who asks for tutorials on adding compression, delay, and reverb. So today, I'll teach you how to add these effects to an instrument or sample in FL Studio. To add an effect to an instrument or sample, you must first add the instrument or sample to a mixer inserter channel. To do so, click on the desired channel in the channel mixer. Go to your channel settings window and adjust the target mixer track box. This box allows you to select which mixer insert or channel you wish to use, so we'll use mixer channel 1. In our mixer, we can see eight effects banks or buses. Select an effect by clicking on the arrow to the left of a bus, and under the select tab you can choose an effect. Let's first add a fruity compressor. A compressor allows you to even out volume levels. For instance, if a singer's voice shifts from loud to quiet pretty frequently, a compressor will help you even those volumes out. In our compressor, we have six different properties. Threshold, the level at which we wish to compress to. Ratio, the amount of compression we wish to apply. Gain, the volume level after compression. Attack, how quickly the compression will begin. Release, how quickly the compression will release or end. And type, the compression type. Adjust these settings to get the desired effect. The lower the threshold, the less dynamic and volume you will have. So keep that in mind when selecting a threshold level. Next, we will add delay into the second effects bus. For this tutorial, we will be using Fruity Delay 2. Here we have our input section, which will adjust the panning and overall loudness of our delay. Here is our feedback section, where you can adjust the delay type, number of delays, and the clarity of the delay. Notice our three delay types. Normal means that if you pan the delay to the left, the delay will output on the left. Invert means if you pan the delay to the left, the delay will output to the right. Ping pong causes the delay to pan from one side to the other. In our time section, we can adjust how quick or slow the effect occurs. In our dry section, we can adjust the overall dry signal volume. Finally, we can add reverb. In our third effects bus, let's select Fruity Reverb. Low cut will act as a high pass filter for the reverb itself, meaning the reverb will not affect below certain low end frequencies. I use this quite a bit because I feel reverberating a signal's low end creates a very muddy sound. High cut works much the same in that it won't affect frequencies below a certain point. I usually increase this very slightly along with the high damping, allowing a slightly more crisp reverb. Our diffusion stands for the clarity or distinctiveness of the reverb. The lower it is, the less distinct or articulate the reverb is. Next, we can choose the color, which creates a very subtle coloration of the reverb. Room size creates the illusion of a reverb in a certain room. Increase the room size to make your reverb sound like you're in a giant theater. Decrease it immensely to make it sound like you're in a bathroom. Finally, we have our dry and reverb sections, which are the volumes of the dry signal and the reverb signal. To conclude this, I'd like to make a note on the order of the effects. I chose compression first because it keeps our signal dry. Then, I chose the delay because I don't want to delay anything other than the dry signal. Next, I chose reverb because I want the delay and dry signal to be reverberated. If I chose delay last, the delay would affect the reverb as well causing the delay to be indistinct. The reason is because whatever effect you use affects everything behind it. Likewise, if I chose to use a compressor last, it would compress the dry signal, the delay, and the reverb all together. So be sure to always carefully choose the order in which you choose your effects. Note that these same principles apply in any digital audio workstation, not just FL Studio. That concludes this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments about this tutorial, leave them in the comments below or send me a message. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it. Subscribe for more tutorials on audio production, recording, and FL Studio. My name is David Crandall, and this is the FL Studio Schools channel. And until next time, have fun making music.